this week's episode, Ben and I have kind of been thinking about all the guests that we've had on and all the stuff that we've learned. And so we're going to sort of recap that for you guys. Um, it's been a while. We've had numerous amounts of guests over the span of our 34 episodes. And sometimes it can get lost in the, you know, the grand scheme of things of um, being able to click back and forth between episodes and figuring out what some of these people's experiences are and whatnot. So this one's just a little bit of a kind of a recap of the weekly boost yeah. podcast itself and who we've had on. So welcome back and uh, yeah, enjoy. I hope, yeah. Um, no, I think that's, it's a really good, a good way to like digest the stuff that we have going on because yes, it's, it's spread out a week apart. And, yeah. um, but, but again, we've had a variety of people on and, and each one offers new uh, ways of thinking about something or, or whatever it is. And uh, we'll talk about it, like the uniqueness of interviewing family members, like, uh, yeah. or even friends too. Like, that's just like just people that you're close with. And like, it's weird. You got to like put on a face to like record a podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. um, it's i think things like this and even like during conversations i try to like highlight that undertone that comes through like a like a conversation where it's like yeah you're talking about an experience but like we're talking about one thing but it's all you know related to yeah. gratitude let's say or you know uh, uh, developing a, a solid work ethic like it's all undertones that come through in the conversation yeah. so it's nice to hopefully you know this is a a welcome episode to to do that that sort of thing because you know we we we're going through we've had over 20 guests in 34 episodes like that's that's a significant amount and and granted three of them are are michael you know getting us to laugh and you know make it a little more fun um but still like um it's all it's, it's, it's all been good. So, yeah. And just like the preface, um, if we are mentioning individuals and we don't mention you don't mean, we don't think that we're not like, you know, <laughs> singling people out or like picking favorites. We've loved every single guest we've had. Um, yeah, just, that's important. Just, to we're too. just going to try to relate as much of like what we've learned to kind of what we generally talk about on a normal episode when it's just us, or even when we do have somebody on kind of, we formulate conversations around the conversations we've previously had with other people. So yeah. It, yeah, just kind of an important note that that's what we're doing. Well, yeah, if uh, if I get a bunch of crap from my dad for not talking about him, like I, I think. Uh, well, there it is. Hey, you won't yeah. get any now. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's but. let's start there because um, that was like a, a cool little thing we did um, to try to like meet the parents, right? Because you yeah. can understand how, how we've been like programmed growing up and everything. That's yeah. a weird experience. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how it was for you. Like interviewing your parents is hard. Yeah, I think uh, you had more, not more fun, but like better success interviewing my dad and I, I, your dad, you know what I mean? Cause yeah, like, no, I, I don't know as much about them and that's, yeah. um, and that's kind of um, important too, but yeah. Like, what do you talk about? How do you be like, this is my dad. You know what I mean? Like, well, it was yeah. just like a weird... you have to, you have to practically retell your life experience with your yeah. you know, parent to somebody who has no idea, like the inside jokes, you know, the, mm-hmm. you know, the activities and like what happened, like, I'm sure I could, if I interviewed, you know, my dad again, it, I'd have a whole slew of things that I could talk about yeah. that went on the last one. It's just that the parent, like interviewing a parent for me, that was as much fun as it was. It was super nerve wracking getting into it because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know what to ask. Like, this is just common knowledge to me. Like who, like who wants to know what really like, yeah. and what do I say? And so that one was, that was fun. It was a good, you know, it was a good laugh and like hearing his stories, like the perseverance through um, type one diabetes yeah. and like his the adversity through that. It, like you kind of take for granted because he's been with your life, you know, your mm-hmm. entire life, obviously. So like you kind of put that on the back burner a lot and you kind of remember you're like, Hey, he struggles with this every day. And we have to kind of see how that impacts our lives as well as his. So. Well, I think one of the biggest things I took from that conversation too, is when this, this, um, you know, diagnosis came, like you're, yeah. you're starting to, you know, hit puberty and, yeah. um, like he, he had, you know, dreams for pr- pr- his profession and what he wanted to get into. And um, to like, to have something like that, you know, at an early age, put a bump in the road, yeah. um, you know, that really teaches you how to respond to, to yeah. bouts of adversity. And I think um, it, that was one of the things, like I said, that, that I took from the conversation that yeah. was really, really well, helpful. And, and like, I hope, you know, others did too. Yeah. Well, and it completely resonated when we talked with Cassidy too, yeah. like about her struggles and like how she overcame her obstacles and like, obviously a cancer diagnosis as young as she is. In fact, as like in anybody's life is like astronomically difficult to understand yeah. and like how she, you know, continues to just go out there and be an amazing person. And like, obviously 
was on the hard four. Or I can't ever say the hardwood. That's that's what <laughs> I'm trying to get. It. The hardwood <laughs> found it. But like how she was, you know, able to, you know, see the court. Coupled. Yeah. 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 I was at um, or I remember watching one of the first games back and it's just like I even had chills. Right. And I hadn't like talked to her the first time I've actually talked to her yeah. um, like extensively without like, hey, like this is Larissa's boyfriend. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. It was, it was legit that that conversation and we were on for like an hour after recording that yeah that, that was could have been very touching time just, that was just a really um incredible person that allows you to open up and just listens you know yeah. like she, she could be the one to to really talk about you know my story this and you know and focus on herself but makes it a lot about other people and um yeah that's another episode that you know yeah, when i listen it, back to it it's it's powerful stuff in there too because right anytime there's a, this significant diagnosis or news you hear or anything yeah. it is really a fork in the road for whatever you know stage of your life a stage of your life that you're in or whatever um but again it's all about how you respond to um that and and you know give yourself time to really process the emotions but yeah. um bounce back from it and i think uh, we've had a lot of that in uh, it, it, it also in correlates episodes. with the our two nhl players that we had yeah. talking about like this past covid season and like mm-hmm. losing their ability to you know either be a like close closely related to the sport still or actually continue playing in the seasons and stuff like that like it it just showed that uh more people than just ourselves go through these instances in life and the degrees of severity differ obviously for yeah. each situation but there's that that same resonating theme that comes back like how are you able to respond to the problems like how are you able to overcome adversity how are you able to you know not shut everybody out of your life and sort of accept help and accept you know support yeah. and all this sort of stuff so it's a very it, it was a common theme with a lot of our guests that we've had on and like from like our parents to you know Cassidy to the you know our, our um, fellow friends and the, <laughs> our fellow NHL players yeah. um it it was cool to see that across so many different facets. Of right. I don't think we fo- necessarily focused on like, well, how did you exactly respond to this? Yeah. Like, it just came up. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, instance of, of getting sent back down to the AHL or, um, you know, fighting your way to a, yeah. an NHL debut or back. Or, yeah. Back or being a part of a weird like team combination thing. Like, yeah. where, like two teams from, I'm not going to say rivals, but like two. Yeah. Like <laughs> the pretty, Amtrak yeah, rivalry yeah, is literally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But like, imagine doing that and it just gets into a bunch or of go, other stuff. Yeah. Or going back overseas to, so that you can not lose out on an entire season. Like exactly. There's yeah. um, the, like you said, the, the response is all what it's about. And yeah. um you know, with, with Mike Liambus, his, his story, there's like, he said, like, there's no good things or bad things. There's just things. And, um, he had subjective, some setbacks. Very subjective. Yeah. yeah. He had setbacks and, um, you know, he just put his head down and kept working and, um, that whole thing. And then, you know, idea of being adaptable is, is, is everything. Yeah. I think, um, especially in today's yeah. world, everybody seems more understanding and adapting, especially like with like classes and stuff for me, at least. Um, but everybody's going through, going through it you know, and, um, it'll be, it'll be nice to get back to normal, but to see if that, you know, adaptability, you know, maintains. Well, and we just talked about adaptability with John, um, yeah. on our last week's episode, like, um, he's been a live performer in his entire career really. And he, he makes a living being able to perform for people. And clearly with the situation going on with, you know, the pandemic, as well as just other, you know, social injustices going on, like it, it, it's detrimental to his career, but he adapted yeah. like he, Roberts was able to do live stream stuff for him to get mm-hmm. his, you know, make his living as well as play beautiful music and all that sort of stuff. And again, different walk of life and a different experience still resonating the same theme of just, you know, sticking with it and putting your best foot forward and moving on from yeah. that point. So, yeah, that was a, that was a fun episode. It was a heartwarming um, episode. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at the end he closes and yeah, very um, appreciative guy. But yeah. It was yeah, really nice to hear. A nice guy to talk to. And yeah. um, like I said, I'm really glad my parents kind of um, influenced that episode. Cause yeah. like I said, I, I talked to him, you know, in passing or once or twice when I was down there, but um, not really this friendship that they formed. Um, you know, I, I think it, it's interesting to, to look back at like the themes in certain episodes. Um, yeah. And like how that episode progresses. So like, yeah. for example, um, we've had friends on. Yeah. Um, 
but early on. Yeah. Early on. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, as it progresses, we've had uh, Patty on twice, but th- that is that, that episode, those episodes feel different than um, other, like having friends on. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's like whenever we talk, you just pick back right back up. That, I was about, just going to say the exact same thing. It's like the conversation never ended. Yeah. It was just a little bit of a pause. Like, it, yeah. It, there, yeah, there's like five minutes in the beginning to like catch up and whatever. Yeah. And, then, and then it's like back into, you know, themes that we see. Yeah. Unintentionally uh, too, guys, we did yeah. not like, it, we, we had a little bit of like wordplay script going on, but like it, it was just almost, well, it was the part two of the first conversation we had, but like, yeah, as yeah, unintentional it's not, as we it's try. Not like, Hey, you remember that game when yeah. like, we through, like, it's not like that. It's, yeah. it's like, well, how do we work on, you know, being better at this or yeah. um, how was a transition in your career, you know, yep. affected and, um, Again, but there's a time and place for that, that reminiscing, you know, at alumni weekend or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of another thing I wanted to focus on when we had, you know, friends on. It's like people don't need to like, they probably don't want to hear about like, hey, you remember, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's more so about, you know, like seeing what they, how they look at certain things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the friends and family, it's it's been, um, I, I like those episodes. I really do it's just, it's more difficult to prepare. You wouldn't think it would be, yeah. um, but it is. Well, it's, it's funny because we've, we've interviewed both of our fathers and mm-hmm. we've also interviewed uncles of ours as well. And like the stuff that we I, learned yeah. from like our uncles, like let alone the episodes with our fathers, like the stuff we learned and we're able to discuss, but like when we were talking with my uncle and your uncle and their respective, you know, kind of industries, it, it wasn't like an epiphany moment, but we were able to take something from that, that directly related to our podcast, right? Like yeah. with your uncle, it was talking about making sure that we're doing what we truly want to do. And like what talking about stuff we're passionate about and mm-hmm. kind of staying away from not mimicking other podcasts that we find like attractive, but more or less mimicking the things that we actually find attractive in our own lives and like doing yeah. that and incorporating into this. And then, whereas with the conversation with my uncle, how he sort of got the ball rolling with some pretty cool projects yeah. for us and like, like helped us website. out with like, yeah, helped us out with the social media aspect and kind of gave his two cents about how he started from something that a lot of people seem impossible, like starting as his own, his mm-hmm. own business and working his way up to, you know, a top, top three business in his industry in the, in the country. So like yeah. hearing that and relating it to us, like, yeah, we were, we started from a, everybody starts from a starting point obviously yeah. that's what it's called that but like it's how you get there um and like being able to reflect back on it but speaking of like my uncle uh thank you again for making the website yeah. for us like and all the stuff that you're getting the ball rolling on i don't know if um, like if you're listening it's that's awesome but he's doing great things with his podcast picture this yep um some pretty cool stuff and uh that one was a, that was a fun one because some of the like i know the stories about him but i you know haven't heard him share it and like in his not humorous way, yeah i guess like he he yeah. would explain the stories very satirely and um mm-hmm. it, it was a little bit more formal in a sense so yeah bo- both those episodes were um you know using again uh like in my uncle's episode it's using a trip to alaska to really t- find things out about yourself or yeah. um using a pivot in a career and you just be like rejuvenated and really yeah. passionate about what you're doing um and and like the episode with your uncle and, and the websites you know fantastic and incredible yeah the building your own brand and setting yourself apart and that's what it's always about right being yeah. being authentic and finding out what your core values are and yeah. how you can maintain those and incorporate it into um, yeah. what we're doing like, like a conversation like this you know yeah. like it, this isn't scripted you know we <laughs> You know we what I mean? Names, like, we have names on a Google Doc. Yeah, so we just like jog our it. memories. It, it's yeah. like it, being authentic and knowing who who we are. That that's more you know meaningful than making sure you know this gets done and this is scripted exactly how you want it and everything. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, you have to, you have to seem professional, right? In, in in a lot of things you do, but like you know, being genuine, I think, is another thing that came through in all of these. Well, in we have interviewed a lot of athletes or at least former athletes or Mm -hmm. athletes that we've played with. And um, I know that's not generally the direction that we wanted to go to because we don't want to be a sports podcast by any means. We're, you know, we're ex athletes, um, collegiate 
at that level. But um, things that we learned from that kind of, they reiterate the idea that you need to be able to work together in a team and like work yeah. together. Um, not only, well, we used Zach as an example for an individual sport, pole vaulting, mm-hmm. extremely individualized. Right. And we connected that to, well, I connected to that to like golfing as well mm-hmm. as um, I don't quite remember the other one, but that's been a while, but sort of how you and I grew up playing team sports and how, extremely difficult it is to play those sports when the eight other players on the field for our case aren't you know aren't by your side they're not you know playing with you they're playing for their own thing or you're playing for yourself like it's that's extremely difficult and so listening to his conversation and sort of relating that to our conversations with patty and michael drew and josh and you know other references that we had it um reverberates word of the day um the idea that we can't go through this thing called life like without people by our side yeah and we've noticed that with a lot of the stuff too like um when we had mark on um Mm -hmm. he said over and over again how much his family meant to him and how they were his strongest support system and wouldn't he wouldn't be in milwaukee for 20 plus years like doing the news that without them being by his side and um you don't really get to notice those things when you're having the conversations with the people like in real time it's one of those Mm -hmm. that you have to sit back and listen and re-listen and understand like hey he actually said this because he wasn't talking about the weather he was talking about like yeah how much his family meant to him or something like that or you know and we had um and we had cassidy on again talking about this you know support system of her teammates because Mm -hmm. you know they practically are her sisters like it it, it's it's just nice to see that 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 sort of as much as individualization is enshrined in our community in our society like the being the ability to go out and be your own person it's ironic and nice to see that you inherently need people with you and we learn that a lot from the people that we've had on this podcast so yeah um for me grad school like especially what i'm doing it's just a lot of um solo work yeah like like with you it'll be you know collaboration with with people more working in the lab like but again there's there's plenty of alone time um with lab Mm -hmm. work but like especially when you are in a certain field it is so important to have people like outside of your field too to talk to and bounce ideas off of and really just like forget about you know, cause it's a lot of reading, right. And yeah. reading is a super lonely thing. Like yeah, unless you're yeah, in a it's, class, it's really hard to read. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're reading Popcorn out loud. Austin or whatever, you know, <laughs> like you're reading out loud, but um, you know, having, having support system and, you know, once like this summer, like it'll be really nice to be able to, you know, go out and um, do so safely and uh, you know, connect with more people. And you know, we as people need that. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, like you said, we are. We're social. We're, we're social animals that like to deviate from being social, yeah. and it doesn't help that what we're going through right now has, yeah, divided us more than brought us together. It sucks, but that's kind of what we're. You know, the cards we're dealt with right now. Um, and speaking of kind of the cards we're dealt with, it all of the guests that we've had on, regardless of who it is, we've talked about instances where maybe life hasn't gone the way that they wanted and Mm -hmm. we're going to kind of get back to what we were talking about right away in the, in the beginning of this episode, but um, they were dealt cards that they didn't have control over. Like, that's just, that's how their, that's how their game, that's how their hand, you know, was playing that day. And what they did to get through that, I'm going to say resonates. It's like our perspective word, but Mm. it completely allowed them to be the person that they are today and we kind of get we kind of get into that when we're talking about um, complacency uh we when i say we ben and i have talked numerous times about not being in a stagnant position we are we feel complacent we don't feel content when we're just sitting in you know with mediocrity and so that constant drive forward is what causes us to do the things that we do and like just so happens today I had an interview for a potential grad school, really important, really cool stuff. Um, 
but it just makes you think about like what's next what's next and i'm sure that all these guests can kind of test that like they're Mm -hmm. they're ready to like say hey what's next what's next like what can we do to be better people not only for ourselves but for people that are around us yeah the um complacency we talked about i think uh we drifted from that a little bit but in the beginning that was that was a big thing yeah right as i was like settling in here and uh motivation yeah i couldn't even imagine yeah you were kind of you weren't complacent in that word but you were nervous you were anxious and you were afraid that if you sat back and kind of let oklahoma engulf you like (laughs) consume you like Mm -hmm. in all the stuff that you'd lose sight thanks tv it's fine that was a impromptu impromptu uh ad break but um no you're talking about being nervous before we like uh, your tv um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> had a mind of its own uh <laughs> talk about being nervous to, let let's talk about episode three oh talk my about goodness being nervous. our first like so we released pilot and it's you know it, it's something awful right <laughs> it's, it's <something>. awful <laughs> <laughs> we release pilot at something and uh then we go to like our second one we're like getting our feet wet yeah. more and you know like to actually like talking about stuff yeah then comes john kilmer <laughs> yeah so we had um if if you look back to some, like the clip from that one um we had oh you has a, a a podcast studio the acoustics aren't that great in there so we haven't like gone through there yeah. uh, since then but regardless where we rent that that out with an appointment or i do at least austin was in wisconsin but you know <laughs> time's passing by john's not here not yeah. here the moments leading up to that like i actually had like butterflies i was like what if i sound you know what yeah. if the questions are bad like all that stuff because it's your third episode right yeah. like why why did we do that right away I don't know. But like we, we were super it. excited about it. Whatever. Yeah. It's done. Um, but <laughs> it's like an hour and a half. Yeah. And like you go on social media and he's posting social media, like stuff on yeah. Instagram. You're like, hello, like, are we still? What's going? up, dude? <laughs> yeah. So here I am reading a book for next week and then boom, he's there. <laughs> yeah. You were <laughs> like, literally nose in your nose was in the book down. Yeah. And a Zoom call. Like but, it joined in and, uh, but I, still nervous right like were you at all oh god yeah i was yeah. Ter- well i was terrified after the first 10 minutes of you know not waiting him not being in the, the call and mm-hmm. like you, that, that's one thing that we've learned really through almost every guest is to sort of be lenient right like it's you ask a lot of individuals to come on and on your show and talk about yeah. their lives and experiences and so us being novice or you know rookies to the podcast game we're like hey we're gonna you know not expect punctuality but you know we're kind of punctual people so it's we were hoping that it was you know transparent to everybody kind of a thing but um i was more nervous for the you know content of that episode because right away um there were some significant internet um barriers (laughs) we had to work around um either on my end or his end or your end or who knows what but it yeah. just it <laughs> it was a really good test to see whether or not this is something we wanted to do and regardless of the outcome of that episode we're you know so 34, yeah. yeah we're in 34 deep now and uh, <laughs> um i just i love that conversation with him though because first of all you were the one that kind of told me about him because mm-hmm. obviously we're gonna have him as a guest and like he worked with mike and all that sort of stuff and so um, hearing about his works and like he's a film producer and he just actually um primrose is uh, yeah, a, a work of his one. that's uh, yeah his first one amazon and, prime uh, i think yeah um yeah. like hearing his perspectives because he's a, a completely different lifestyle from ben and i like it, you mm-hmm. know like being able to live out west in la and like the, the sort of culture that comes around there and like his explanation of that as well as the the creation of that's a big boy my <laughs> patented phrase uh, <laughs> a giant airplane flying over his head um it, it was just a, it was funny that we picked that episode to have our first kind of bigger guest on actually our first yeah. guest and of a relatively larger stature than what yeah. we were anticipating and so yeah. <laughs> that's happened before though yeah <laughs> that's happened before with guests like <laughs> like bigger name guests like oh it was today or um 
Yeah. Sorry, something came up. So it's like it's also yeah. taught us patience too. Yeah. Because everybody's got stuff going on. And like uh, you, you put it really well. Um, we're asking a lot for them. To, it is. Yeah, yeah. Because time is invaluable. We talk about that a lot. And like be, giving somebody your time yeah. is nuts. Like I remember when we had Mark um, Baden on, he was in his office at work. Yeah. Like He's he was at the studio. The he was ready. Yeah. It was so cool. Like being able to see, like, that's where he, you know, films <laughs> his, you know, segment his meteorology segment and like telling everybody the weather and stuff. So like, you're exactly right though. The patience it's taught us um, as well as I think the ability to speak publicly um, mm-hmm. I had a little bit of a fear of public speaking until this, but uh, not too bad anymore. I'm able to kind of get over that just because it's okay if you mess up. You kind of realize that. And like, we screw up a lot on this. <laughs> Thank God for editing. But like the other people that are in the conversation, they don't know who you are besides like what's, yeah. what you're talking about now. Like you just kind of got to roll with the punches. Just, you know, if you're going to mess up, just do it and get over it. You're, you're fine but yeah the, I mean, that worked for me but not everybody's the same obviously yeah but we all i mean you're asking lots for them to tell their story too like it's and it's, they're terrified i bet because yeah, well, they're probably they gotta really be comfortable nervous. yeah right uh, um yeah having having guests on is uh there's a lot of moving parts a lot of times schedules um that's the hardest well, part i think what, yeah whether or not you know the person yeah um you know, that really sets the tone for the episode too. Like we can joke around with, with Patty and he can roast you and everything, but you know, when we have this on me, roast yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then when we have like, uh, you know, someone else on that we have, you know, a somewhat, you know, personal relationship with yeah, and then takes, it takes on a conversation that's, you know, professionally personal development driven. Like, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's fun it's fun to to talk through conversations and um, get to know people with what they're willing to share. Yeah, um, and that's more probably than just what, the surface. That's probably what this podcast has best taught us is that mm-hmm. there's more to people than what meets the eye kind of thing. Like you, especially if they're comfortable sharing it, you can really figure out by somebody's story, like the undertones of like what they've gone through and like understanding yeah. how, emotional it could have been or how difficult it was to sort of get through what they were going through as well as the the positives right we hear a lot about um you know the the great things that people were able to accomplish or able to kind of get out of their situation or their you know what happened like um i'm trying to think off the top of my head but almost every situation that we can relate like to an athletic event, there's always that triumphant moment of either a championship or, you know, that return to play or um, Mm -hmm. kind of that, just that team camaraderie that you get. And that, that was a really easy thing to pick up on is like how much that actually meant to people. Mm -hmm. Um, But also like in the professional aspect, like I'm sure with like my uncle and his business, like seeing like those reports on like, you know, pretty big, like critic websites like you know darren fox does it again like top three in the country kind of thing mm-hmm. or like with my dad like being recognized all the time for like center manager managerial positions and like awards like you see these instances and in people that you kind of know really closely and you're like hey they you know they're doing a lot more than you just you, you yeah know like you take that for granted and like the same goes with like randy like when we had mm-hmm. Randy on there, like his, his journey through law school. And like when we had that episode on discussing the election and like the, the, um, what it's going to look of the like, debate and yeah. like what it's going to look like it, it was awesome to see that from somebody who was actually studying it. exposed to it. Yeah. And it exactly. exposed to it because I'm going to get into this just for a little bit. We're surrounded by information that we have to question every ounce of it for validity. We have to look at it and we have to say, I don't know if this is true. Okay, so you have that, but then you have to act on it. Well, am I going to believe it, believe it? Yeah. Or am I going to do my research to figure out, well, you know, is it true or is it false? Yeah. And I think when we talked with Randy, like hearing about, you know, his conversations he's had with professors in law for over 30 years, mm-hmm. like you, you have to be able to manage the information you're, you know, seeing in front of you. And that's hard. And we've, we learned that from a lot of people like yeah the information age like sucks sometimes it does you know? it does because, because there's so much of it that you don't know what to do with it it's so nice to be able to pull something up and trust it and and it's just this new cultural thing where it's like well i don't know if it's just true but i saw it you know and um sometimes the 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 uh 
the research to back up like whether like like you said like confirming if it's if it's reliable or not that takes a long time and sometimes people uh, don't have time like people don't yeah, have well, time. i know i don't i like to sometimes take things for face value and well yeah you know like you know if i'm wrong then i'll accept that because i just took something for face value shame on me yeah but uh, you're exactly right the time it takes is incredible but it it's important and when we talk with people that are professionals in their you know in their industry like that it matters. Like when we talk with our yeah. professors, especially like, Hey, you got to make sure that, you know, the stuff that you're putting out there, the stuff that you're like digesting when you're, you know, reading or when you're, you know, mm-hmm. researching it, you have to make sure that it's right. <laughs> yeah. and, and right. Isn't as, ob- or isn't as subjective as like it, it is said to be like, right. is means true. Not, you know, yeah. right. in like a personal <clears throat> opinion, like it, there's it have to be factual evidence based on it, but yeah um i hear you on that it's uh it's frustrating for it me is. at least yeah but you know to be bombarded with information that you don't even know it's true and people are just looking for attention yeah. um the we'll, we'll close with this because this is a really good segue into it um you know talking about this bombardment of information and um it really stresses me out at least uh just like certain societal things and issues and um you know, this doom and gloom look, look of everything and, yeah. um, you know, uncertainty of this, this is, it comes down to fear and anxiety, yeah. right. Um, about the world around us. But I will say this podcast is really great. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. Now, if people want to, you know, I don't know what I'm saying, whatever. If people want to criticize me for, for that, whatever, but yeah. it really grounds me. Um, yeah. You know, even if it's just you and I talking, knowing that someone else has the potential for listening to it um, and, you know, hearing what we have to say and talking through some some big issues um, that we, we find, you know, important or talking to somebody yeah. else. It's just such a grounding experience that, you know, you don't you don't realize that until you're 10 episodes in. You're like, wow. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize that I needed something like this to, like, put my feet back on the ground and mm-hmm. realize only control what you can control and you know all those cliches and stuff yeah. um i don't know if you've experienced well, that too i'm gonna say something to that because i perfectly agree and i actually was discussing this with a colleague of mine but um for the longest time you and i have used that grounding or that grounding aspect in our lives was baseball like being able to yeah. shut off the school and like shut off you know friends and everything like that and kind of just step foot on the you know on the grass and dirt and you know kind of yeah. do our own thing for three hours or however long it would be Four, five, yeah, five six yeah but <laughs> i think you're exactly right this is a way for us to be grounded in a completely different medium mm-hmm. like the the interface in which we do this is really foreign to us honestly like besides zoom university this is like one of the first instances where it's not something based off of physical exertion like mm-hmm. athletically and it's it's murky waters for sure because we've spent you know a decade and a half of our lives at least playing yeah you know sports or you know doing outdoor activities recreational activities and kind of grounding ourselves that way but this is more of like an like an academic and like intellectual grounding if that yeah. makes sense like it's definitely um in a whole different realm but at the same time carries notes of you know the stuff that we know and love from you know years past so um, it's it's a fun way to turn off the world though because you're yeah. exactly right knowing that there's even one person listening to this and like maybe taking something from it maybe having a comment or like a critique Thanks, like mom. who cares like yeah exactly <laughs> but like even that that's grounding in the sense that you're able to yeah. you're able to speak something to somebody else and they get to interpret it yeah. in whatever way you know well, that's fit. and it doesn't necessarily like I think it is totally different than like us grabbing a cup of coffee and talking about things. Yeah. It's different because as much as you try to be like, Oh, this is, this is who I am. Like you're still, you still have that like film on that's that, you know, it's going to get published. Yeah. Right. Like we could do episodes where we don't publish them, you know, and those would be a totally different. They would be structure. drastically different. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> what I'm saying is like you, it, you know, this is us, like us talking, like this is, this is how yeah. it is. But 
like I said, knowing somebody might be able to take something from the conversation yeah. or um, it really frames how you talk about things. Yeah. Um, and like you said, it's, it's just a, a not a necessarily humbling um, experience, but, but grounding Definitely. in yeah. a sense. Grounding that, is a great word for it. Yeah. And going through these murky waters, like you say, like, and it's also been nice to, to help others along, you know, yeah. like, um, with four string or other advice that my, you know, other friends are, are going through, um, podcast wise, like, Oh, Hey, how did you do this? Or, yeah. um, it's nice to, to pay it forward in a way and, yeah. um, you know, help others along because we gain, we gain so much from this too. Um, yeah, and, more than we think. Yeah. Like, that's exactly. why we're doing a reflection episode like this. Yeah. We, yeah. Because sitting down and like, Hey, we learned a bunch from everybody. Exactly. It's, it's the information age thing. You just like, Oh, they have episode with this person, this person, this person, this yeah. person. It's like, and because of how we are, it's not like we're like a super focused podcast where it's like, we're only going to have academics on and we're going to talk about their, their books. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. And, and for a lot of people, I like those podcasts because I you know too. exactly what you're going <laughs> to yeah. get. Yeah. Um, for us, it's kind of a wild card sometimes. And I think that's really um, also it's like our podcast. So I, I feel strongly about it, but I think that's, that's also kind of uh, important too, because yeah. it allows people to take what, what you can from it. Um, yeah. And if you like it, great. If you don't agree with an episode, fine. We just, you know, like who knows? Maybe next week you will. Um, yeah. That's what's. It's nice about doing a variety one. And yeah, uh, kind of, kind of closing on this. Um, our name is Weekly Boost Podcast, and we do our best to kind of <laughs> boost it? everybody's week, right? But um, it, maybe like a last closing thirty seconds. But um, I was told this today by somebody um, kind of that I just met actually, and just you know asked me a question like, "What do you like to do to kind of balance your time?" And it made me think, obviously I answered the question with whatever, you know, was on my mind at the time, like, <laughs> you know, the hobbies and stuff. But now that I'm thinking about it, it, for, it really shouldn't matter what it is, as long as you're doing something that makes you happy, yeah. like makes you happy, as long as it's not infringing on other people, um, sort of that individual, like that pursuit of happiness kind of idea and the declaration of independence. But um, yeah, go out and do something that makes you happy today, because we're getting to a time um, we're closing in on the the end of a national crisis i'm not saying i'm saying that with loose terms because who knows if it actually can physically end but um do something safe and happy you know that kind of makes you feel better about yourself whether it is read a book sit in a hammock you know go for a long drive go for a drive something anything um yeah, we don't really get to talk much about ways that you can boost your week, even though that's kind of what we were getting at with the name. But um, yeah, I'm I'm looking at a sign right now on my uh, on my um, pin board in the back. It just says "Explore More," and I I like that, and that's what I'm going to try to do. So um, yeah, that's kind of all we have for you guys this week. Um, it was nice being able to recap all the people that we've had on and kind of the episode ideas, the themes that sort of continue to present themselves, and you mm-hmm. know future episodes and um hope you guys enjoyed hopefully it wasn't us <laughs> flapping our gums too much i mean when isn't it but uh yeah a little a little authentic and organic t- this week for you guys mm-hmm. so enjoy <laughs>